a secret recording of Hong Kong's chief executive. She says the first thing she would do is quit if she had a choice. And now she's withdrawing the controversial extradition bill that sparked the Hong Kong protests. But is it too little too late? Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. I have some advice for Hong Kong's chief executive, Carrie Lam. If you propose a bill that's so unpopular, a quarter of the city comes out to protest, and if you refuse to answer any of the protesters' demands, and if you become so hated that you have to physically hide from the public, then I suggest you ought to deal with public discontent as swiftly as possible and not wait nearly three months. But Better late than never, some would say, because on Wednesday, Carrie Lam finally, finally announced that she would withdraw the extradition bill that could send criminal suspects to mainland China for trial. The government will formally withdraw the bill in order to fully allay public concerns. Unfortunately, this does not fully allay public concerns. It might have had she withdrawn it immediately after a million people protested back on June 9th, but now, the Hong Kong people are upset over a pretty wide range of things, like police violence against protesters. That's why the protesters have five key demands for the Hong Kong government. So with only one of those demands met, it's just not enough for most protesters. Also, the timing is a little odd. Lam withdrew the extradition bill just days after a secret recording of her was leaked to the public. The recording came from a private talk she gave last week at a luncheon. I'm going to play the whole four minute recording for you because it's a fascinating glimpse into what Carrie Lam is actually thinking. I don't want to spend your time or waste your time for you to ask me uh, what went wrong and why went wrong. But for a chief executive to have caused this, this huge havoc to Hong Kong is unforgivable. It's just unforgivable. If I have a choice, the first thing is to quit. <laughs> Having made a deep apology is to step down. So I, 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 uh, I make a plea to you for your forgiveness. I'll be very honest with you. It would be naive for me to uh, give real page or rosy picture that things will be fine or I had a deadline. I can assure you that um, Beijing does not have a deadline. They know this is will, will prolong. So uh, we have made special arrangements. There will be a 1st of October National Day celebrations, but still uh, having a lot of disruptions. So we are going for a modest but a solemn type of celebrations on the 1st of October, which means that uh, they and ourselves have no expectation that we could uh, clear up this thing before the 1st of October. Another thing I want to assure you that uh, is my own um, uh, feeling the pulse and through discussions, uh, CBG has absolutely no plan to send in the PLA. But the first, of course, I'm sure in your heart you will, you will feel, and I'm sure a large number of people feel that I do have a solution, and that is a political one. Uh, but I have to tell you that uh, this is where the, the crux of the matter lies. Once um, an issue has been elevated to a national level, to a um, sort of um, sovereignty and uh, security level, let alone in the midst of this sort of unprecedented tension between the two big economies in the world, um, the room the political room for the chief executive, who unfortunately has to serve two masters by constitution, that is the central people's government and the people of Hong Kong, that political room for maneuvering is very, very, very limited. They care about um, the country's um, uh, international profile. It has taken China a long time to build up to that sort of international profile and to have some say, not only being a big economy, but a responsible big economy. So to uh, forsake all those um, um, positive uh, developments is clearly not on the agenda. But they are willing to play it long. They are willing to play it long. 
So you have no short-term solution. Hong Kong suffers. Uh, you lose tourism, economy, you lose your IPOs, and so, but can't do much about it. But after everything has been settled, the country will be there to help with uh, maybe positive measures, especially in the Greater Bay Area. And nowadays, it's extremely difficult for me to go out. I have not been on the streets, not in the shopping malls, can't go to a hair salon, can't do anything. Because my whereabouts will be spread around on the social media, the telegram, the Wong. And you could expect a big crowd of uh, black t-shirts and, and black masks, uh, young people waiting for me. There's a lot to unpack there. One, she said the first thing she would do is quit if she had a choice, but she does not, implying that the higher-ups won't let her. Two, she said that the Central People's Government has no plans to send in the People's Liberation Army. Instead, they're willing to play the long game and let Hong Kong's economy suffer as the protests drag on. Of course, Lam said that partly based on feeling the pulse, and I'm not sure I'd bet on her ability to feel the pulse of anything, including at this point, herself. Three, she admits out loud that her hands are tied because she has to serve two masters, the Chinese Communist Party and the people of Hong Kong. Although, we all know which master really counts. And four, she can't even go to the hair salon because those protesters would be waiting. So life is pretty tough for Carrie Lam. Now, after this audio was leaked to the public, she did what any self-respecting politician would do. She held a press conference to deny the whole thing. This is what she said on Tuesday. I have never, I have never tendered a resignation to the central people's government. I have not even contemplated to discuss a resignation with the central people's government. The choice of not resigning is my own choice. That's a brilliantly worded denial. It can be technically true that she never tendered a resignation, while also being totally misleading because she might have never tendered a resignation because she was already told not to. When a reporter tried to question her on the specifics of that, she did what any self-respecting politician would do. She denied it again and walked away. Your answer does not arise. I have never tendered any resignation. Thank you very much. But you have to feel a little bad for Carrie Lam. Not because she can't get her hair done. But it is pretty hard to say that you didn't say the things that you did say when someone publishes the audio of the things you really did say. On the other hand, the leaked audio might not be so bad for Lam. Sure, it shows that she's the helpless puppet of the Chinese Communist Party. But since she's not calling the shots, she can wriggle out of the ultimate responsibility. And this also illustrates a larger problem that Hong Kong faces. The people can protest all they want, and they do. And Carrie Lam can even eventually give in to one of the protesters' five key demands, withdrawing the extradition bill. But it's not enough, because ultimately, all the key decisions being made about Hong Kong are not in the hands of the Hong Kong government. The decisions are being made by Beijing. But if the Chinese Communist Party thinks that withdrawing the bill is going to be enough to stop the protests, then they are not feeling the pulse of the protesters, especially because Lam did not agree to an independent investigation into police brutality, something that's angered protesters and ordinary Hong Kongers the most. But don't worry, after Hong Kong police chased protesters into the MTR, beating and pepper spraying anyone who happened to be on the trains, wrestled a protester to the ground until he passed out, and then chased and tackled students on a playground, Beijing knows exactly what to do. Yes, they're talking about outlawing masks for protesters, and punishing teachers for heinous crimes, and introducing patriotic education into Hong Kong schools. It's not like trying to do that in 2012 led to citywide protests. Yes, the Chinese Communist Party has got this handled. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. And now, it's time to answer a question from a fan who helps us keep making controversial episodes like this through supporting us on the crowdfunding website Patreon. 
Ben asks, have there been any attempts by the CCP, whether cyber attacks or other means, to shut down or limit the protesters' use of Telegram or other communications means? Good question, Ben, and the answer is yes. They've tried to hack Telegram, and they've almost certainly had agents trying to monitor all the chats. But that being said, there's not much they can do when Hong Kong still has a free press and open internet. Of course, there's a solution to that the Emergency Regulations Ordinance of 1922. That would give the Hong Kong chief executive broad powers, including the power to completely censor the press, and probably the internet as well. But it's such a nuclear option that they're unlikely to use it, at least right now. Thanks for your question, Ben. And thank you to everyone watching. Be like Ben and support China Uncensored by pledging a dollar or more through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Click the orange square button on the next screen to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.